What's going on, guys? Chase, ChaseWins.com coming to you for Wednesday, September the 9th. Let's get into a recap, get you on a free play um, in Major League Baseball. Uh, let's talk about what we did as far as premium plays first. Uh, we went 2-1 in our premium plays today. Should have been a clean 3-0 sweep. Uh, same scenario that kind of happened yesterday. We had the Padres stranded a bunch of batters. Um, you know, it was a very, you know, Quick pace game, but very low scoring. Ended up being one to nothing. Didn't cover the run line, um, so it ended up being a four and one day versus a clean five and zero. Oh. Then we get into um, Tuesday, and it was kind of the same thing. White Sox took an early lead; they were leading the entire game. Then they end up letting it um, get tied up, and then it was just the most pathetic display of bullpen management that I've seen in a long time. And it was surprising to see it come from the White Sox, who have managed their bullpen so well this year. And what I mean by poor management is it's not that they were not putting people in. There's three uh, relief arms in particular that <clears throat> not only have the highest walk percentage of anybody on the entire roster, but two of them are among the top five highest walk ratios in all the American League. And they put each and every one of those players in with runners already on base. So you're going to tell me that with runners on base, you are going to put in somebody who is inevitably going to walk another batter. That is the most absurd thing that I've ever seen. So what should have been a game that was already in the bag, we end up dropping the White Sox minus 130. So we take that loss. We had San Diego on the run line. They absolutely blew the doors off of Colorado. I mean, it was, oh, I mean, they they hurt them bad. And what was it, 14 to 5, I think, was the final score or something. I mean, they whooped them. Uh, free play, which was also a premium play, the Vegas Golden Knights ended up winning in a 3-0 shutout. So congratulations to everybody that played that. Um, that was our premium play card for the day, so profitable there. But then... We dropped our first top play in Major League Baseball of 2020. It's bittersweet, I guess. Um, I really wanted to go the entire season without losing a top play. Uh, games of the month are not something that we lose, period. Um, now, I mean, obviously I was getting text messages flooded in. I haven't even checked my email yet. I'm sure that it's flooded in with a bunch of nonsense. But people are completely misinterpreting how the Dodgers game went. We had the Dodgers on the run line, minus $1.40, minus a run and a half. Started out, no score in the first inning. Gavin Lux goes and takes one deep in the second for a quick one nothing lead. Then, what was it, in the fourth inning, I think that it was, the, um, the Diamondbacks ended up gaining a little bit of traction. They got some offense going. They put some people on. And they ended up scoring five runs in the fourth in that single inning. But it wasn't because of Walker Bueller. I was getting a te one text message that said, well, at least the manager is smart enough to take Bueller out. Bueller was pitching fine. He had a couple of batters that he struggled against, but he didn't give up a home run there. What cost them in that inning was what I always preach. The most dangerous thing for any team is their own committing of errors it's not another team it's not home run it's themselves committing errors it's the easiest way to lose a game now what should have been a double play in a one run inning they bobbled it they only got one out that pushed a second run across the plate so now it's a two run inning they would have been up two to one but the inning should have been over right then. No additional scores. We start a new inning. Dodgers go up. It should have been a one-to-one -one game at that point. But because of that error, not only did they give up a run there, another batter came in. Walker was frustrated. He gives up a multi uh, three-run home run. So now it's five-to-one. Yes, Walker gave up the home run. But Walker shouldn't have even been throwing that in that inning. He should have been able to go rest and regroup. The inning should have been over, period. I don't care what anybody says. That is what cost them that inning. 
Now, of course, as soon as that happened, I'm already getting people telling me, you suck, you suck, whatever. Listen, we haven't lost a top play all year in Major League Baseball for a reason. They come back. They end up tying up the game in the seventh inning, I believe. It was 6-6. Six to six. They carry that all the way out, and we go into extra innings tied at 6-6. Six to six. At that time, the Dodgers had stranded 17 batters, or runners, excuse me, 17. Think about that. Just from what they stranded, they should have been able to put up six, seven, eight more runs. I cannot help that they stranded a record number of batters for this season. It's the second highest number of runners stranded in all of the major leagues for 2020. And it's again and it was with a team who doesn't strand runners. They haven't done it all year. And they're probably not probably not going to do it again. But it happened. Go into the 10th inning. Obviously, you have your ghost runner on second. Gavin Lux or Bellinger ends up crossing the plate. Now they go up 7 to 6. There's one out, two on. Gavin Lux for the second time that night belts a home run. A three-run homer this time. They go up 10-6. to six. We're going into the bottom of the 10th with a four-run lead. Three outs away from winning the game. I had a feeling that Arizona was going to score. But at that point, I wasn't overly worried because they had two insurance runs. They give up those two insurance runs with a home run. But the problem is, Jansen should have not been put in in the ninth inning. Period. Or what? In the eighth inning. Bottom of the eighth. He does not need to go over 20 pitches. Roberts knows it. He knows it. Hell, he says it to reporters. Anytime he ever goes over 20 pitches in his clothes, he'll do his, you know, his media talks and goes, it's just not in the cards for me to pitch that long anymore. He's a three-up, three-down guy, has been for a while, and they learned it the hard way tonight. They gave up the two-run homer. That's when right there he was done for the evening. There was only... One out. They get the second out. Runner comes up, or batter comes up. They are one strike away. One strike away. But instead of playing tight to the bases, he was, he balked him to push him to third for no reason. That cost him the game as well. Had he, it had, had he, you know, fucked with the runner a little bit, made you know, made sure he stayed put at second, there could have been a chance he could have prevented him from coming home. One strike to go, they would have won by two. Base hit, they're not hugging the bases. It goes right up the middle. There's not a person within a mile of that ball. Now it's 10 to 9. The Dodgers end up winning the game 10 to 9, but of course we had them on the run line. I was on the right side of that game, no matter what you want to say. I mean... I can't help that a record number of bat uh, runners got stranded. I can't help what happened in the bottom of the 10th. And I certainly can't help that they made some very poor decisions as far as when they were moving pitchers. Bueller should have never come out, period. If he would have been a, if that error would have never happened, even if it would have happened, let him get out of the inning, let him rest, regroup. He could have taken you at least through the fifth. And you wouldn't have been sitting there literally on your last arm you had. You had no other options. You couldn't take Jansen out and say, okay, let's let, let's let somebody else come do it. That was it. When he took the hill, whether he pitched <clears throat> 10 pitches or 100 pitches, that's the only arm you had left. You would have had to start going to your infield and outfield at that point if you wanted to put in another arm. Bad situation. I hate that it had the loss had to come like that. It was pathetic. I apologize. It's not my fault. We were on the we, the we we had the right pick. Period. You know, and if you don't agree with it, then either you don't understand how baseball works, or you didn't watch the game. I mean, we were three outs away up by four. The game was ours. But what are you going to do? Losses happen. But one thing that I do that a lot of services don't do. When I lose a game like that, I give every person that purchased it one week of service absolutely free. Every premium and daily top play in all sports, other than NASCAR, obviously, because Patrick's NASCAR has nothing to do with my plays. So if you're one of the people that purchased it, don't worry. You will be extended. It'll be there when you, you know, in the morning when you wake up. I don't need 10,000 emails overnight going, I don't see my week package. 
takes a little time to add the wheat to every single person, but you will get it. We'll make this money back in a couple of days. I hate that it had to happen. I mean, it, it, that loss should not have happened, period, but it did. So let's move on. Let's go have another winning day like we do best. Free play. I'm going back with the Dodgers. Now, here's there's a couple of reasons why. Clayton Kershaw, obviously, he owns the Diamondbacks. Chase Field is one of, truth be told, I feel like he pitches better at Chase Field than he does at Dodger Stadium. He is really in a groove right now. He's given up a couple of careless doubles. I mean, I don't even want to say that his homers were careless. He struggled with some doubles, but has been at home. I think he's going to have an easy day at Chase Field. Now, here's the thing. One thing that I do believe is that Roberts was willing to burn through a Greyhound bus full of bullpen guys because he knows that he, he probably won't have to use many relievers on Wednesday. Clayton, if pitching well, they will overextend Clayton on Wednesday. Clayton is good for six to seven innings most nights anyway. They'll let him go farther as long as he's not giving up runs and as long as they don't see it becoming harmful to his arm. So I see Clayton being able to pitch a long game, a successful game. Clayton gets run support well. And here's the thing. As many arms as the Dodgers used, here's the big kicker on this game. As many arms as the Dodgers used in a relief role on Tuesday, the Diamondbacks used one extra, used one more than the Dodgers did. And Weaver went and pitched another inning and a half longer than Bueller. And Weaver sucks. They put in, and here's the thing, out of any team in the National League, when you look at a dedicated closer, the Diamondbacks have one of the worst. They don't like using him in a closing situation unless they have to because they know he can't go in the next day. He was used as a reliever on Tuesday. They ended up putting in two pitchers after him. So they are going to be, I mean, both bullpens are completely depleted. So when it comes down to the bullpens, both teams are up Shit's Creek. So now you have to focus on the starting pitching. It's rare that you have a team that is so good in the Dodgers and a team like Arizona whose bullpen is mediocre at best but always has at least one good bullpen day every seven days because their bullpen isn't terrible. They have nobody. The Dodgers have nobody. So now it's going to come down to starting pitching. And I'm sorry, it is beyond night and day with Clayton Kershaw taking the mound. So that right there, with the run support that he gets, the pitcher that he is, it should be a no-brainer. Not to mention, Mookie started to struggle. He went 0 for 4 his first, time, his first four times up. First hit that he got was in the seventh inning on Tuesday. Then he started rocking and rolling. Bellinger started doing the same thing. Gavin Lux is in the zone. Rios is in the zone. I mean, the Dodgers right now are swinging the bat well. Tuesday was the exception to the rule. I think they could have swung much better, and I think they make up for it on Wednesday. Both teams are tired. Arizona's not swinging the bat well at all. They haven't all season. I think the Dodgers trounce Arizona on Wednesday. It's not like they have anything to bounce back from. They just won the game on Tuesday. But I think they win it in dominant fashion, as they should have on Tuesday, on Wednesday, with their ace on the hill. So I'm going to take them on the run line, get it before it gets too high. Right now you're going to lay a dollar forty-five to take them on the run line. I could see it getting as high as a dollar sixty-five or a dollar seventy on the run line, unless money starts coming in on Arizona because they think that the fatigue's going to really get to the Dodgers. That'd be a dumb decision, but I've seen people do worse things. Both teams are fatigued. The Dodgers have the upper hand in every single category that there is in a game of baseball. I'm taking the Dodgers. I'm taking them confidently, and we're going to go and get this money back with the Dodgers on Wednesday. That is your free play. Take them on the run line. I have, I mean, if they lose, it, it, it'll be a miracle if Arizona can pull off a win on Wednesday against them. So take the Dodgers. I'm very confident in that game. On the run line, let's go out there. We're rocking and rolling in all sports. Again, I can't get over how that game ended, but 
it happens. Again, it's sports. So everybody's going to be given a week package absolutely free that purchased that game. And um, there's a game that I'm looking into that's within the next week. I'm not going to say when um, because, again, I don't know what the pitching situation is going to be. But I've started looking ahead of what it should be if no games get out of hand between now and then for either team. We could still potentially have a game of the year for Major League Baseball this year. So keep that in the back of your mind because um, if we do, I'll, uh, I'm will i going to try to release it the day before if everything um, falls into place like I want it to. But we still got a little while yet uh, before that game and that matchup is set to take place. So, And hopefully nothing will get rained out where we have double headers and, and all that garbage. So had it not been for the Dodgers game on Tuesday ending the way it did, we would have had another incredible day. So let's go out there on Wednesday. Let's make up for that loss. And then we'll still go into the end of the week strong, making money, and doing what we do best. Again, I can't apologize enough. It's not my fault. I mean, we were on the right side of it. But sometimes, like I said, it's sports. Sometimes things like this happen and you just can't do anything about it. If that same game happened tomorrow, I'd bet it again blindly without thinking twice about it. Hell, I'd probably even bet more money on it than I did tonight. So let's go out there on Wednesday and have a big day, guys. I love you. Make sure you subscribe. All of the scouting report videos that I'm doing, those are going to be going forward for subscribers only. The live shows are starting within the next week. Again, again, those are going to be for people who are subscribed to the YouTube channel only. Free play videos will stay the same, but if you want to be able to watch uh, my scouting report videos, the live shows, and the, um, the podcast that we do on Spotify, they're going to be put on YouTube as well, but only for people who are subscribed to the channel. So make sure... You hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so every time a video comes out, you get notified immediately. You can watch it, make your picks. That way, if there's any line movement or anything like that, you don't have to worry about it. I love you guys. I'll see you back for Thursday. Let's go finish the week strong. Do what we do best. Sorry for the loss, guys, but we'll get it back tomorrow. See you.